Hey guys, so today I wanted to make a video talking about the episode campaign celebration format. Uh, at this point, we have now had three full episode campaigns, and I think three is enough to sort of base uh, a general opinion off of in terms of, uh, you know, what I what I think about the celebrations. And you guys, of course, can let me know down below what you guys think after you've uh, heard me explain my thoughts on uh, the format here. Uh, so we are just about a month and a half away, a little bit more than a month and a half away from Legends Festival starting. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty crazy. It feels like the anniversary just finished, but we actually are pretty close to Legends Festival. So I will also be doing a video discussing my thoughts on what Legends Fest could be. It's going to be a tough one this year. I mean, we at this point pretty much have all the major moments represented in the game from the from the series. So uh, we're probably going to be getting reprints from this point forward unless we get new con uh, Dragon Ball content at some point. But um, I would expect that we probably will be getting it. Well, I don't, I don't want to say at least, but one more uh, episode campaign before the uh, Legends Fest starts, because we have just enough time to get one in before Legends Festival. So we will probably get one either starting this week or next week. They actually just announced a free to play Tapion. So it makes the most sense that whatever the episode campaign is going to be, it's probably going to be movie related or it might just straight up beached a movie Sagos from the movies episode campaign, which feels like that's what we just got kind of a Dragon Ball Saga. But um, all right. So uh, the Dragon Ball Saga episode campaign is pretty much done. Does not look like we're going to be getting any more units from Dragon Ball which is a bit unfortunate because I think this banner right here was a massive failure. I think both the new units are pretty underwhelming, pretty poorly designed. Um, and then on the Kid Goku Path to Power banner, uh, Kid Goku is, of course, very good. Master Roshi is really bad. Um, and then Aider, I'd I say, is just solid. He's, he's good, but he's not competing with like the best units in the game. Uh, Zenkai's, we got Bulma and Chi-Chi. I would actually say they're both pretty good. I actually really like Bulma. I think Bulma's pretty damn good as a Zenkai character. She's a lot better than most of the other regular Zenkais we've gotten. Um, but this saga campaign started on uh, the 6th of September. I am recording this video on October 3rd. So, I mean, it pretty much is a month for these episode campaigns. That's pretty much the format they go with. We typically get two new banners per episode campaign, and we typically get two new Zenkais plus a free-to-play unit. That's usually how it goes in terms of new characters. And then, of course, on top of that, we end up getting different events, um, you know, celebration campaigns, free stuff. Uh, we had Hoi Poi for the celebration. Obviously, it wasn't the greatest Hoi Poi ever, but it's still additional free stuff we can get. Uh, events to give CC, although it doesn't feel like there's that many these days. But that's usually what we get with these uh, episode campaigns. And um, again, if we take a look at last year's Legends Fest Part 1 banners, uh, this one came out on the 25th of November. So again, a little bit over a month and a half from now. And if we take a look at when the last premium character released before anniversary this year, it was Kid Buu who came out on the 26th of April. So I'm kind of thinking we're probably going to get an Ultra or sorry, an Ultra Kid Buu, not LF Kid Buu. Ultra Kid Buu on the 26th of April. I, I'm kind of thinking that we are going to be getting an Ultra this month, just because, number one, it's really easy for people to summon on Ultra Banners. They see the, the Ultra character, the, the Ultra character looks really cool, they're ridiculously strong, and it's just like a super enticing way to use CC. Um, and number two is we haven't had an Ultra in a while, actually, right? The last Ultra we had was Vegito Blue for the anniversary. And to me, I don't think they're going to go the entirety of Anniversary to Legends Fest without giving us any Ultra character. Um, so this, this is a perfect opportunity, I think, for them to give us uh, an Ultra here this month, at the end of the month. So I think it's possible what happens is we get an LF and an Ultra this month, and that will be leading into the like two weekish downtime period, two slash three week downtime period uh, before Legends Fest begins. We can sort of take a breather in between. All right, so I made a rather lengthy Twitter post here. Um, this was when my voice was completely gone and I just wanted to get my thoughts out on this. So instead of making a video, I just made a pretty long Twitter post about my thoughts on the episode campaign format. So I'm going to first go through the post here and I'll sort of use this as a uh, springboard into a deeper discussion about this and so I can go into more depth about my thoughts about the uh, the format here. So 
let me go through each section here. Like I specifically, uh, you know, sectioned off different parts of this because I'm going to make that into their own portion of the video here. So we have like what four sections. Uh, all right. So yeah, so I actually have been seeing a lot of um, maybe not so much negativity, but pushback when it comes to the episode campaign format. Because again, we have now had three episode campaigns where we've had Majin Buu Saga prior to the anniversary. We had um, the Frieza Saga, and now we've had Dragon Ball, right? I, I don't count the Cell Saga celebration as an episode campaign because number one, it wasn't technically labeled as an episode campaign. All it was was one LF banner and uh, like the Cell Games PvP season, or right? Like that's pretty much all it was. So it wasn't really an episode campaign. It was kind of like half of an episode campaign. So we've had those three so far. Um, and I have seen a lot of people sort of be pretty pretty, I don't want to say, again, negative about it, but a little bit uh, disappointed in how these episode campaigns have turned out because, you know, when the Majin Buu Saga episode campaign was first announced, I think me and a lot of other people were pretty excited to see how uh, this format would play out. Um, seemed like a pretty cool idea at the time. And uh, to be honest with you, this is going to go into this first section here. I don't really think the format is as bad as most people think it is. Um, but it obviously does have some pretty big flaws, which we'll get into in a bit here. But uh, um, if you think about the current format of the episode campaigns, and again, the typical format for these is we get two banners per episode campaign, which is how it's been, right? Maj and Buu Saga. We got the t the uh, bl uh, the uh, Buu Saga duo, Goku and Vegeta from the Kid Buu fight. That was the LF banner. And then we had the Ultra Banner with Kid Buu. So even though we only got two characters in the entire in the entire Majin Buu Saga episode campaign, it was an Ultra and an LF, but it was still two banners, right? Uh, Frieza Saga campaign, of course, we had the Ginyu Force Mega Rising banner, and then we had the Namek Goku LF banner. So that was two banners. And then Dragon Ball, we just had the uh, Kid Goku Path to Power LF banner, and then we had the Mega Rising banner with the 23rd World Tournament units. So. When you look at the overall format, and of course, you know, in terms of other than summonable units, we get two Zankais pretty much, uh, and then a free-to-play unit. That format, in terms of new character releases, free-to-play and summonable, does not really differ from what we would typically get on a month-to-month -month basis, right? You look at like an average month that we would get prior to the episode campaign format beginning, and there really isn't that big of a difference between the sheer amount and quality of characters that we were getting, right? I would say Dragon Ball, this episode campaign in particular, has had a pretty significant drop off in terms of power level of these characters. I think for, for whatever reason, they're just severely under underpowered um, compared to a lot of other recent units besides Kid Goku. Kid Goku is the only exception because he's the LF character, but pretty much every other character, I mean, Roshi, Android 8, uh, 23rd World Tournament, Goku and Piccolo Jr. Definitely not as good as they should have been. Um, Android 8 is, is, is good, but he's, he's, not, he's not as good as he should have been. Um, but I would say, as a general rule, looking at all the episode campaigns together as a whole, mostly quality and quantity are pretty similar to the standard. So, you know, when people say, oh, uh, you know, I, you know the, the amount of characters we're getting during the episode campaigns and the quality of characters we're getting the, during the episode campaigns isn't as good as what we would get without them being there. I don't know if I believe that. I think it's just the same almost, right? Um, so when you compare the format to a typical month of releases, there really isn't much of a change in terms of the amount of new characters we get to the, or the quality or of the units on a monthly basis. I also think having a theme around the ongoing events and release schedule could potentially build excitement in anticipation of what could be upcoming, which I think is fine, right? I mean, we, we get the announcement that there's going to be... Um, you know, uh, I don't know, the next episode campaign is going to, well, let's just assume it's going to be movies, right? That gives us, like, a basis to go off of in terms of what characters are we looking forward to releasing from movies? Are you looking forward towards a, I don't know, a Janemba character, or a Metal Cooler character, or uh, an LF Super Gogeta, or a Broly movie Goku that does the, you know, the, the uppercut punch as an LF character? Like, I don't know, there's a million movies characters to choose from. But, with the ep with like with them announcing these episode campaigns like this, I think it does have pretty exciting implications just in terms of what to be hoping for, right? Of course, when the Namek Saga campaign was announced, I was like, okay, 
uh, we're going to be getting some freezes here or what, right? We didn't, but I was pretty content with the net with the uh, Frieza Saga campaign. Dragon Ball Saga, same thing. Really wanted a Demon King Piccolo. We got one, but free to play, right? So I think having a theme surrounding the campaign is pretty good. It's pretty nice. Um, but the way they've been con uh, constantly pushing these Saga teams as a centerpiece of each of these Saga campaigns means that a significant number of releases, especially Zenkai's and even unique equipment, uh, end up not being relevant due to the Saga teams either not functioning or aging out extremely quickly, since those types of teams have almost zero flexibility or synergy with future releases. I think all three episode campaigns that we've had up to this point are all guilty of this. They've all been trying to push the Saga team associated with the episode. So like, of course, Majin Buu Saga. We had like, what was it? Like Zenkai Yellow Super Saiyan 2 Goku. And I think it was what Zenkai Blue Buu Tanks are both trying to buff like Majin Buu Saga plus their color. And then we had a bunch of different unique equipment that was like, you know, gains stats if you are running a full Majin Buu Saga team or whatever it was, right? Which in theory, it sounds nice. But the problem with doing that and the problem with making characters that are dependent upon being on certain Saga teams like Majin Buu Saga is like they're only going to be getting buffed the next time we get Majin Buu Saga units who might not even work the best on the Majin Buu Saga team. And of course, there are equipment where, for example, if you're running like a double boo team, like a, like a fat boo and a kid boo or whatever it is, like there's equipment that you want to run with only using regen units and stuff like that. And so building these saga teams like this, especially with Zenkai characters that don't have Z ability and Zenkai ability like overlap means the, the, the saga teams just don't work. Like they're, they're just never going to work. There's literally nothing they can do with the current structure of the game and the way that team building works with trying to line up Z abilities, trying to line up Zenkai abilities, trying to line up Ultra abilities with the leader slot, trying to make equipment work optimally. It's never, it's never, I, I'm telling you, it is literally never going to work with Saga teams. They would have to completely overhaul the way that their team building system works in order for Saga teams to be relevant. And um, <clears throat> we've seen that with Boo Saga. We've seen that with Frieza Saga. And the sad part about this is this mostly affects Dragon Ball, right? We just got a new Dragon Ball tag, but the problem with Dragon Ball is Dragon Ball essentially has to be built with a Saga team structure. I say a, I say a Saga team structure because technically it's not a Saga team. It's the new tag Dragon Ball. But basically what the tag Dragon Ball is, is it is a glorified Saga team. The reason they had to make Dragon Ball the way it was is because characters like Path to Power Kid Goku, Roshi, and Android 8 are not on the Dragon Ball Saga because they're on movies, so they can't be on Dragon Ball Saga, but they would really have no teams other than movies if they didn't do that, right? Ro Imagine Roshi. Roshi would have zero tags. He would only be on movies. Um, so, like, when is the next time that characters that came out during the Dragon Ball campaign that aren't just, like, Saiyans, or I guess Piccolo Jr. Like, when are they gonna really be able to get buffs to work on the same team together? And this is the problem that a lot of people have with the Dragon Ball campaign. It's just that like, so many of these characters that released are so underpowered that we're left with sort of like this half team that's like literally half as good as it should be. And it's like the next time they're gonna get buffed is in like 2025. <laughs> so I, I just, it, it's, it was such a massive failure in my opinion. All right, let's move on to the next section here. All right, so as it stands right now, I would consider only one of the three episode campaigns that we've received so far to be an actual success, the Frieza Saga Celebration. It introduced multiple summonable characters that had a solid impact on the game, essentially introduced an entirely new team to the game from a single banner that is com uh, competitively competent and had a decent amount of supporting events slash campaigns going on throughout the celebration. So. When I'm talking about the success or failure of these episode campaigns, please understand that this is from a perspective of somebody who's playing PvP at a high level. If you're somebody who just likes collecting characters, or if you're somebody who's really just not that invested in PvP, or you're somebody who just likes playing the game super casually PvE oriented, that's fine, right? You can be the ones to judge how much you enjoy these campaigns on your own. Please don't take this as me saying, you know, 
uh, objectively speaking, these campaigns suck, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying from the perspective of somebody who actually wants the meta game of PvP to advance and to be fluid and to be robust and con to continue changing and evolving, I would consider these episode campaign formats to not be the most optimal right now. Um, and again, the reason why I would consider the Frieza Saga celebration to be, you know, pretty successful as compared to the Majin Buu Saga campaign and the Dragon Ball campaign is because you take a look at the summonable units that have come out during the Frieza Saga celebration that are just way, way ahead of the other characters, right? We have the first banner, the Ginyu Force Mega Rising banner. I mean, you could probably look back throughout the history of this game and you could probably put that banner up there as one of the most valuable banners ever. I mean, Captain Ginyu, legitimately, you could put him in the top six, seven, five, if you wanted to, characters in the game. Like, he's really strong for a 1% Mega Rising character. And he's not the only character that released. You have Birder and Jeez, and then you have uh, Raccoon and Goldo as well. All three really, really solid units. We have two tag characters, all new animations. The quality was really, really good on those animations. Uh, kits were really nice. They all worked together very well. You could build a team all by... Uh, summoning on that banner by itself. Uh, the equipment they released for that banner, the Ginyu Force uh, characters, just all around. I think they handled that release really, really well. And then we have Namek Goku, who is literally, I had him at number two on my top 10 list, uh, the last list I made. Uh, he was really positioned well to handle the meta when he came out, and still still is, of course. Um, Probably the biggest counter in the game to Vegito Blue, and uh, probably the biggest counter in the game to Goku and Frieza, <laughs> right? Him, I would say him and the Gammas probably are. Um, just you know, his lock in, everything he's doing, just a really, really strong release. So all in all, the summonable units that came out during that Frieza Saga celebration just far surpassed what we received for the other celebrations, right? Uh, Majin Buu Saga, we, we of course got Kid Buu, really strong Ultra character, but. I would consider the uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta to be very, very underwhelming. Like, not even just a little bit underwhelming. They were very underwhelming. Um, and then besides Kid Goku from the Dragon Ball Celebration, everything else was pretty subpar, I guess is what I'll say. So, like I'm saying here, the Buu Saga and Dragon Ball campaigns do not have as good of a resume as the Frieza Saga one does, mostly due to the lack of meta impact of the units released during the campaigns. Buu Saga had one relevant unit with Ultra Kid Buu, and Dragon Ball uh, whiffed half of its releases. Honestly, they whiffed more than half of its releases. Uh, so we got, what, five summonable units for the Dragon Ball Saga? They whiffed four out of those five releases. Well, I guess three and a half. I, I don't like calling Android 8 a whiff, because he's actually pretty good. Um, but I, he, I think he still needed to be better. So I'm going to say they whiffed three and a half out of five of the releases for the Dragon Ball campaign, which is just, it's just so... It's so it's so disheartening for me as a, as a fan of the OG Dragon Ball series, man. All right, so let's move down here. This is the final section, yeah. Um, so what do I say here? I think the episode campaign format is fine as a blueprint for how to design non-major celebration content months in the future, or content months in the future, uh, but they need to reconsider their outlook on the goals of these celebrations. In my opinion, these celebrations are not moving the needle further enough, and thus it hardly makes sense to become super invested in these campaigns as an average player, and as a result, excitement surrounding the game sharply declines like we are seeing right now, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's any surprise to anyone. Uh, we're sort of in this, I don't want to call it dead period, but we're in a little bit of a down period um, in, in terms of the time of the year we're in right, right now. Like, we're in between Anniversary uh, and Legends Fest, which typically, historically, has been a bit of a down period. Um, of course, last year, they gave us uh, a pretty substantial run of pretty popular characters. We, we had LF Cooler into Ultra Broly into Beast Gohan before festival. I don't like that's not, that's that's obviously not happening this year. So I think this year is probably a little bit less exciting in terms of this period than last year is. But um, in terms of the format and the structure of the episode campaigns, the fact that they're themed, I think, is cool. Um, and I don't think they need to just completely scrap the episode campaign format overall. All they have to do is adjust the way that they handle these summonable units. And I think it would also benefit them as well, which I think I do mention this in a second here, is to maybe alter the time frame in terms of how long the celebrations last. What do I say here? 
One thing they can do is simply make these celebrations last longer. Instead of making each of these celebrations one month with two banner releases, make them a month and a half with three banner releases, or even two months with four banner releases. Yeah, so like I said, um, I'm not a huge fan of them, you know, continuously pounding home the Saga uh, teams during these celebrations. I think it's a, I think it's a mistake to do that. Um, but one way to, I guess, alleviate that decision, if they want to continue doing that, is to make these Saga and Episode campaigns longer and then give us more banners for these Sagas. So for example, Majin Buu Saga, instead of getting the one LF and one Ultra, maybe they tack on another half month to the celebration and they give us a Mega Rising as well, which would maybe give us two or three new characters for Majin Buu Saga so that Majin Buu Saga as a team could actually end up being you know, relatively competent. Um, or maybe for uh, Namek, you know, we got the Mega Rising, we got an LF banner, maybe they could give us one more LF banner or they could give us an Ultra to round out that team, right? And then the same thing about Dragon Ball, right? Dragon Ball got an LF and a Mega Rising banner, we could get one more LF banner or maybe we could get an Ultra for the team, right? That would really help the team out a lot. So I think doing something like that could really help push these teams to the next level. Whereas right now it sort of feels like the celebration ends right as the team is getting a good foundation for itself, but it's not at the level where it needs to be. Um, other things they can do are to ramp up the viability of Zenkai characters, make them synergize better with new releases and significantly power up unique equipment for old Zenkai characters so that they can at least stand a chance against new units. Unique equipment for LF characters that fit the theme would also be a good way to power up certain teams. Yeah. So I think something they actually did a pretty good job of during the Dragon Ball campaign were the Zenkai units um, in terms of power level, right? I think Bulma is actually a really, really strong Zenkai character in terms of how well she fares in actual combat, which is not something we typically see from a lot of Zenkai characters that are not LFs. Chi Chi's pretty good, right? Um, my, my biggest concern though with the Zenkai releases is, and this is something that you can very obviously see with the Dragon Ball campaign is, Bulma and Chi Chi don't buff Dragon Ball, of course, because they're, they're old characters. And Dragon Ball is a tag that literally came out, what, a month and a half ago? Or a month ago? Um, so what happens is Chi Chi and Bulma, yeah, you'd want them to be Zenkai benches for your Dragon Ball team, because guess what, you know, wake up call, Zenkai benches are necessary for PvP. If you're running a team that isn't utilizing Zenkai benches, your team is not good, period. But that's how the game is now. Um, so if we have these Saga teams, I mean, I guess, again, Dragon Ball is sort of a glorified Saga team that have Zenkai benches that are not Z ability buffing the team, you're just hurting yourself by running that team because the, the team sucks, period. Um, so I've been saying this for a while, but, you know, eventually it's going to catch up to them that these Zenkai characters are not Z ability buffing their teams. And I, I just I just continue to question why they can't change Z abilities for characters that get Zenkai Awakenings. Um, so that, that's that, that kind of sucks. Um, and then the unique equipment they released for old Zenkai units. Yeah, that's been something that I think a lot of people have become sour about as well. Um, they announced like, oh, there's a new uh, what, what do they call it? Like non-Legends limited sparking unique equipment coming up. And it's like, they always suck. It's just like, why even waste time on, on this, right? Well, I don't know if they always suck. The equipment themselves are good. It's just that the, the Zenkai units that, they're, that they're, the equipment is for are just so old that no matter what they do, unless they really like make them ridiculous, like the, the equipment ridiculously good. It's just not going to be enough, right? I mean, they just don't make the equipment enough to carry how outdated these Zenkai units are. So to me, that just seems like almost a waste of time to, to create that equipment. And as a player, it seems like a waste of time for you to invest resources trying to get good roles on that equipment, too, because you could just be wasting your resource. Well, you could be spending your resources on equipment that is actually good for like general teams that will benefit you a lot more in the long run. Um, and then the last thing I mentioned was unique equipment for LF characters. I mean, that's something that we haven't seen in a, in a really long time, which I'm not really sure why they've decided not to do that. Um, I think doing that 
could actually have a lot higher of an impact than them continuing to do the Zenkai unique equipment for Zenkai units. Like, I think the last unique equipment we got was for LF Merge Zamasu, which obviously wasn't a very good one. But, I mean, we, we saw a bunch of characters get ridiculously strong unique equipment, like LF Cell. His unique equipment was ridiculous, made him a really strong character. Of course, Super Saiyan 4 Gojira got a really ridiculous one, so... If they want to keep doing that, um, I don't know if they pushed that to the side because they were focusing more so on doing the Zenkai unique equipment, but honestly, I re reverse that. Like, just focus on the unique equipment for LF characters and don't really, I would say, shy away from doing the uh, the sparking, uh, you know, Zenkai character unique equipment. It's just, it does not affect the game as much as they think it does. Um, and then lastly, a hard focus on Saga teams should be abandoned, yes. I don't think they should uh, be ignored completely, but we don't need every Zenkai character and nearly every piece of equipment to be geared towards specifically helping a Saga team that will be relevant for two months or not at all. Yeah, so one of the biggest examples of this, I could pull this up actually. Let's pull this up. I remember during the Frieza Saga, campaign. Let me see if I can get this guy pulled up here. Uh, the first Zenkai was this Kaioken Goku. And this Kaioken Goku actually has a really strong Z ability. 3% to Sun Family Strike Arts damage and 35% to Saiyan Frieza Saga. Free, uh, sorry, Saiyan or Frieza Saga Strike Attack and Defense. Like this is a really good Z ability. And then, his, and then his Zenkai ended up being Green Frieza Saga. It's like, what a waste. This could have been a sick bench character for Sun Family, or even just Saiyans. And they make it Green Sun, and, and they made it uh, Green Frieza Saga. Like, this is the biggest waste. And then we can see that we see a similar thing with the uh, Frieza, uh, the, sorry, the, uh, the Boo Saga as well, right? We saw, who was it? Uh, where's that yellow Goku at? This guy, and then Boo Tanks. Where's Boo Tanks? Right here. This Goku. I mean, this Goku has a bad Z ability. 33% uh, to yellow. Strike and Blast. I mean, I guess if you're running like a double yellow team, you could make use of this, but his Zenkai ability then is yellow Majin Boo Saga. Just terrible. Um, and then Boo Tanks is blue Boo Saga Zenkai ability. And his Z ability is regen, blast attack, and then 26% to powerful opponent, blast defense. Like, imagine if this guy was blue uh, regen or blue powerful opponent as a Zenkai ability. This could have been a really good bench unit, actually. Like, this combo here, that could have been really important for, for regen, who's struggling right now to have any kind of blue representation. Like, a, this guy has a bench for, like, Blue Zamasu could have been interesting. So, I feel like that's a pretty big uh, screw up in terms of their design for these uh, Saga Team Zenkai characters. Um, and then, I think the last thing I mentioned here was we need more fluidity and impact with these episode campaigns, and I think these are things that could help these campaigns feel less meaningless. Um, yeah, so ultimately, what I think about these episode campaigns, I guess as, as a summarization here, is I think the idea is fine. I don't think they should just completely scrap the episode campaign format. I don't. I think it's fine, right? Having these campaigns focus on individual sagas and episodes, like that's cool. We we know what the theme is. We know what characters to hope for, and we know what characters to expect, kind of. Um, but in terms of the actual releases, they just need to be better, right? We had the anniversary. The anniversary started in May. It is now October. And we should not be having releases that are like half as powerful as the anniversary characters. Like we're past the anniversary now. The anniversary is history at this point. And it just feels like every single release basically, you know, after the anniversary has ended, is just nowhere close in terms of power level to the anniversary characters. And I, I just, I, I, mean, I think that is a mistake, right? I'm not saying to power creep the game constantly. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying to make these characters flat out better than the anniversary characters, but you know, the Mega Rising banner that came out a week ago at the end of September 
should be pretty close in power level to the characters that came out at the end of May, I would say. I, I think that's fair to say, which is definitely not the case. Right, the, the, the 23rd World Tournament Goku and Piccolo are nowhere close to the part one anniversary units. It's not, it's not even remotely close. It's not. Like Yellow Jiren clears those units. It's not even, it's not even close. So those are my thoughts on the current episode campaign formats here. Let me know down below what you guys think. Let me know what you think of the individual episode campaigns we've gotten. Majin Buu Saga, Frieza Saga, and uh, Dragon Ball. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.